Welcome all of you to this live program at Orthopedic Principles. Today, our guest of honor is Dr. Note Bietzel from Cologne, Germany. Dr. Bietzel is the head of the shoulder surgery unit at the Atos Orthopedic Clinic in Cologne, Germany. And he's also the professor at the Technical University of Munich. Dr. Bietzel obtained both his degrees in medicine and his master's in sports science from the University of Bonn, Germany. He completed a research fellowship at the Musculoskeletal Institute at the University of Connecticut. He has authored and co-authored a multitude of internationally publications and peer-reviewed articles and book chapters and regularly attends international conferences and meetings as invited speaker and instructor. He has received the Media Award 2013 from the German Society of Arthroscopy Surgery, the AGA. So today it's my great honor to introduce you to Dr. Professor Knut Bietzel from Cologne, Germany. Over to you, Dr. Bietzel. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the invitation and the kind introduction. So today's topic is a bit the AC joint and I try to bring you our ideas and our evolution, which we had within the last years of uh, research and clinical practice. So consultant, of course, all the data I present to you is only possible if we work as a team. And I have to thank on one hand, the team in Connecticut with Gus Mazorka and the team in Munich with Andreas Ebenhoff. And also now with the ESA, the upper extremity shoulder committee of the ESCA, um, we have also done some data which is presented in this talk. So you can find um, the consensus data and a lot of the things I tell you by this publication by us in the case STA. So let's get into this topic. We know that there are more than 180, or I think nowadays more than 200 different variations of surgical techniques. And we know that there is a bunch of clinical studies about instability of the AC joint. And you see a couple of ways how to fix this in the history. And there is a big question if we should operate on AC joint instability at all. And we see that if you look on, on the type three um, instabilities, you have similar clinical outcomes and you have perhaps a bit less persistent pain, but of course, by doing surgery, you can generate more complications, which is about 14%. However, seeing all this data, I do see patients who have chronic problems with an instability of the AC joint. This patient here I show you, he's a young guy and he had his problem when he was playing tennis and he was, when he was doing overhead motion. So the ASES score, which you see in the right picture, we do a patient reported outcome system with our patients. And he was in a 92 ASES score. His problem was clicking and pain overhead when playing tennis. So looking just at the scores, at the constant score or ASES score, you don't pick, pick these patients. And I think that's a reason why we don't really can show the clinical significance in surgical treatments. So we've learned that there are a couple of factors for successful surgery. You here see classic Rockwood classification. Um, up to type three is basically for conservative and the discussion is about the surgical treatment with the higher instabilities. And the evolutions we made where we got better and we got better ideas for diagnostic accuracy, we got better and better ideas for correct indication. The biomechanical understanding significantly improved and this we could transfer to anatomy and surgical techniques. And at the end of the day, we have learned to avoid complications. So the first evolution is our diagnostic accuracy. So this is AP fuse of a shoulder, which you get when you are in the emergency room and you have the patients referred to you. So now you look at this picture and who of these two has the higher instability? Very difficult to say with these pictures. So let's take the first patient who looked less and we think that the panoramic view or the bilateral Sanger view you see here, this allows you to objectively measure the CC distance, which is one objective parameter you can measure. And with the comparison of the other side, uh, you have the chance to pick those. 
And this is the other one. And if you bring him into the panoramic view, you see that the CC disc isn't so much increased. So in this situation, a uh, stress view like the Alexander view, this helps you to see this overriding of the lateral clavicle over the acromion. So this is a horizontal instability, a type four or a three B according to, to the uh, Azakos classification. So we put this together into a review article, which shows that basically, well, there is no consensus, but what we've seen and what we could show is that the bilateral projections really objectively give you a possibility to measure that. The horizontal instabilities are still a problem for us to pick them correctly. We think that the stress views are helpful with this. I think in the future we'll come more with the cycle method of the burn group, et cetera. But right now we believe that these are the best ways to um, objectively see your images. Well, the second evolution is about finding the correct indication for your patients. So here you see the problem. For me, I say joint instability, that's scapular thoracic surgery. So the important part is that the scapula works properly. And we know that in patients, when the AC joint does not work properly, they have a high rate of dyskinesia of the scapula. And on the other hand, the patients who have a high rate of dyskinesia are the ones who have problems. But we have also learned from Carbone's study that you can treat them conservatively and you have a certain amount of time where you can get them compensated with their scapula. And so they can be copers and they don't need their AC joints so much anymore. And there seems to be a cutoff that after six weeks training, when you don't get them better, they will not improve further, but they need at least about six weeks to get into a good compensation. And Conservative treatment means you have to train them. If you refer to um, Ann Cools and Ellen Becker's scapular rehabilitation algorithm, you find a lot of very good uh, therapies where you can train the scapular motion and the compensation for these patients, which is very important in our view. Here you see a conservative patient type 3A, so he was a copa after six weeks, he is pain-free in his motion, has a little bit to train more on his scapula, but is fine and is good with conservative treatment. Well, if we th say we start conservatively, there's the question, do we miss something? And we looked up our data in Connecticut with Gaz Mazorka and his group, and we found that after a five-year follow-up, you can pick those, those who are transferred to surgical treatment after an initial conservative uh, treatment, uh, get the same good results as the successful conservative patients. So yes, you don't lose anything. You can start without surgery. Well, putting this together is our treatment decision in 2022. So on the one hand, we have since about 10 years, our, our ISACOS upper extremity committee consensus on the um, classification for Rockwood, where we like inaugurated the type 3A and 3B as the copers and the non copers. And here we suggested to have a scapular analysis and to have the imaging, as I told you before. On the other hand, today I think that I also stratify my patients into a higher risk group and a lower risk group. So I know that heavy manual workers, males, overhead athletes, they will get problems with an instability of the AC joint. On the other hand, if you have contact athletes like ice hockey players, not so heavy workers, females, they don't usually get problems with the AC joint. So in the chronic situation, they are well copers. So you can put this together to stratify for your patient a little bit the risk and then find the correct indication. Well, next evolution is our biomechanical understanding of the AC joint. So that's probably everybody knows this is an anatomic view of the AC joint. You have the CC ligaments with the conoid and the trapezoid. You have the AC joint capsule and you have what we think is important, the delta trapezoid fascia, although some of the anatomists say that they don't find it, but we believe that this is an important area. So, and then when you look at horses, they don't have a clavicle, they don't have an AC joint, and you see they do this pendulum motion. And when you look on the other hand, 
as humans, we have 360 degrees full range of motion and we can put forcefully forces on this joint. And this is due to the strut function of the clavicle and then the AC joint. And here in this race car, you find a strut. And a strut helps the race car, if it goes into the curve, to have stability for the motion. And this is basically what happens when your clavicle and your AC joint works probably. So there's also data that shows that especially in the internal rotation abduction movement, there you get the highest degree of motion into the scapula. And this is the area where the intact AC joint stabilizes. Greg Bain has put this triangle in his, in his book chapter or in his book. And here you see that the anterior part of the triangle, that's the clavicle proper working AC joint. The posterior part, the scapular tract, that's the muscles. And on the medial part, it's the trunk. And here you see the overriding in this video, how the lateral clavicle is like under run by the acromion because the acromion wants to be anterior because of the pectoralis. And on the other hand, and that's what was the problem with all the rigid stabilizations. This is the anatomic motion of the AC joint. So we have load unload, we have horizontal motion and stability, and especially we have rotational control of this joint. So we looked this up biomechanically. So we took the capsule and we cut the capsule in the different zones because we didn't believe in the understanding that only the superior parts of the capsule are important. And what we found there is that the entire capsule is very important for your stability. So especially the anterior and superior parts of the capsule and that you lose about 75% of your force against translation and possibly 90% of your force against or your resistance against rotation when you cut the capsule. So, well, this has to be transferred into the anatomy and a surgical technique. So our development now is a stay simple procedure. So we try to have an anatomic technique with a one tunnel CC construction and a repair construction of the capsule. And I do the same technique in the acute ones with an just bracing. And I do the same thing or basically the same technique with adding a tendon in the chronic situations. So why have a totally different techniques for the chronic when you can have one anatomic technique for the acute and for the chronics? So biomechanically, we have learned and we have shown in our data and studies that you have a very stable system with the suture pulley systems. And this is the old generation, the first generation, the tight ropes. We have also seen clinically that patients are very satisfied and get a very high degree of return to sports rate. And comparison with other techniques especially the hook plates, you get more and more data which shows the advantage of the flexible systems. And especially you don't have to take these out and you, like you have to do with the hook plate. And the hybrid system where you combine the bracings with a graft, they also seem to be advantage in comparison to um, older techniques like where we're done. So one problem which emerged out of this was the problem horizontal stability. So again, there's no consensus in looking at the review articles. We think that it's often neglected and it's difficult to understand as I've shown you with the indication finding this problem because it's difficult to diagnose. So the French group has shown that if you combine your CC reconstruction as it was done in the previous days with especially the tight ropes, with a cyclage or addressing the capsule, you get better results. However, if you have a CC reconstruction with a double construct, uh, then you have a good horizontal stability. But on the other hand, it's very hard to get an exact tunnel placement with two tunnels through the clavicle and the coracoid. And I personally want to reduce my bone tunnels, want to reduce my critical drillings so I try to be with a one tunnel system. And if you compare the one tunnel systems, you see that adding a cyclage at the capsule really is helpful, especially to improve the horizontal stability. 
Another point besides the anatomy and the centering of the joint is that by adding a reconstruction on the capsule, you get a combined loading, a load sharing. So this helps you to take away the load of the main construct. So the more heavy load, the more heavy worker my patient is, the more important it is to get to the capsule as well. If you put a cyclage on the capsule or you try to reconstruct the capsule, we looked at different ways to do that in our biomechanical setting. So in the first study, we looked at different variations, how you can put a tendon around there. So what we learned in this study was that the more far away you are with your fixation points, the more windshield wiper effect you get. So the closer you get to the anatomic points, that's helpful. And in the other study, we looked at different configurations, just anterior, just posterior, in X shape or in box shape. And what we've learned there is that on one hand, it is important to have the whole construct. So the box shaped double things seem to be the more advantage. And on the seven, second hand, we have learned that with the CC reconstruction and an AC capsule reconstruction, you get the best results. So just addressing the AC capsule alone without addressing the CC ligaments seems not to be advantage. More and more studies show us that anatomic techniques perform better and have clinical advantage compared to non-anatomic techniques. Here's it how we do it. With the new techniques, we have the 2.4 cannulated drill, and this allows us in the acute setting to do one drilling for the CC and the coracoid with this very small drill. And you see arthroscopically, if you put your scope into the anterior lateral portal, you can really hit the base of the coracoid, which is the widest part of the coracoid. And it's so important to get there. So either use a 70 degree optic or go transtendinous with an anterior lateral portal to have this nice view. We can use the same drill then to do the horizontal drillings through the lateral clavicle and through the acromion to pass our seclage there. So the video of the technique basically was published by us in arthroscopy. You see a setup I use when I do a patient chronically. So I take a gracilis graft for an ipsilateral knee, and you see I have him in beach chair and I have put away the head a little bit that makes it easier for you to get the drill holes. And we have learned another problem because some of these patients, especially with the generation, the third generation, the dog bones, um, they have a couple of knots on top and some of these patients are irritated, soft tissue, especially if they wear a rucksack and when they're very athletic. So this is the fourth generation of implants. We now have a knotless implant for the CC reconstruction, which has an ultimate failure load of over a thousand newtons. You basically know it from the ACL tight ropes. And this one, you can tension in a one after the other method. Uh, and you get a very strong construct um, without having the need of so many knots on top. Here you see an acute patients, which we treated with the system in combination um, with the 3B instability in the acute setting. And this is another patient, a young female patient with a chronic instability. She didn't respond to conservative treatment. And here you see the instability in the video and maximal horizontal instability. So in this situation, we combined the new knotless fourth generation device with the gracilis tendon. And here you see how you can pull both into the tunnel. So you have your graft and the hybrid system inside the tunnel. And then you put from lower or from your anterior portal, you bring in the dog bone and you pull it back. And with this, you then have the combination. And if you pull your graft back from posterior of the clavicle, um, then you have made a nice turn with the graft. And finally, you can tension the device. And in this hybrid sit setting, then the graft is like sutured on top of that together with the two parts. You see how it nicely goes down. It's a little bit of work to push it down, but you gain a knotless reconstruction with that. Here you see the pictures, and then we use the remaining graft to go over to the AC capsule to address the AC capsule as well. So the fifth evolution 
try to avoid complications. So we have learned that, especially in the acute settings, you have a little bit of slack of about three millimeters if you reposition the grafts. And Marcus Scheibel has shown that when you over reduce with about three millimeters, then you're in a perfect setting. So try to over reduce the clavicle to get the best results. And we then ended up with all the reviewers when we told them about our systems and our hybrid systems that they were concerned about uh, too much stress on the AC joint. So we took a um, pressure foil and we measured the intra-articular pressure of the AC joint. And we saw that if you stay within this plus three millimeters, minus three millimeters area, uh, you're in a very safe place. So this joint is different than the knee joint because the arm is a hang hanging system. Uh, osteoarthritis basically never is an issue in these patients afterwards. And I've told you before that the risk of fracture really correlates to the tunnel volumes. So with the first generation of implants, we had about 4.5 millimeter tunnels and this in a double tunnel, or even with the graft rope, we had about eight millimeter tunnels. And this is very risky because you have a high risk of fracture, and especially at the coracoid. If you're too anterior where the coracoid is very small, and then you get in trouble. So there's a lot of studies out there which showed that there is a direct correlation, which for me is the aim to stay small with my tunnels. And we've also learned in our bone mineral density measurements and in our biomechanics that if you stick into the anatomic insertion of the CC ligaments, you have the best bone mineral density. The more lateral you go, I mean, every trauma surgeon knows that, the more lateral you go, the more soft the bone gets. And this really also correlates with the screw pull out if you put screws in there biomechanically. We've also looked at the acromion. Their bone density on the acromion is also so that there is this sweet spot, which is a little bit of bump at the posterior part of the AC joint in the acromion. This is the area with the highest density of the bone density, and this is the most stable area. And Gas Mazorka, like always made fun of us and said that we Europeans, we don't have contact athletes and no collision athletes, so we can allow to drill through the acromion. So Felix Dirner did this finite element study and biomechanical study where he looked at the fracture mechanisms with different drill holes. And what he can show that you're in a pretty safe space if you stay in the anatomic area, don't go post the AC joint, don't go into the spine. This is the risky area. But if you stick in this silver area, you're in the safe zone and you can easily put 2.4 millimeter tunnels with four 4.5 millimeter tunnels also, but then you have to be careful with your tunnels. And another point we've learned and we've measured is that if you take away the lateral clavicle, you increase the instability of the system. So the worst patients for us are the ones who had received a very um, aggressive lateral clavicle resection and who were still with an instability. So here you see in this study from us, if you resect more than five millimeters of the lateral clavicle, you add to the instability, especially the horizontal instability. So don't take away lateral clavicle. And this has been shown by Frank Matteschläger and the Munich group that if this is the case, like in this patient you see, they are pretty hard to treat. So, I mean, we can be successful in treating them, but they get less good outcomes. So try to make it right in the first place. And we have tried to give an overview in this paper together with Felix Döner and myself, we've shown that uh, if you stick to the biomechanical roots and you try to bring back the biomechanics, you have good approaches even in the revision settings. So taking things together, um, which is nicely put together in our ESA consensus. So we believe that the true AP view, panoramic view, that really gives you an objective measurement. We think that the addition of the Rockwood classification, like by our Isaac's suggestion, uh, where we think about the copas and the non copas, where you bring into your indication also the function of the scapula. 
We don't know it yet, but we believe that about three weeks is the cutoff to think for a chronic procedure. So after three weeks, more or less, I tend to go with a graft. On the other hand, today our combined hybrid solutions are so good that I'm either on the earlier side to use a graft. Our arthroscopically assisted, basically anatomic techniques with suspensory devices either in the acute setting without a graft or in combination with a graft give that gives us very good results. And we think that in the chronic cases, you should add biology by adding a graft to these systems. So thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Beetzel, for that brilliant presentation. Uh, Dr. Beetzel, actually, you can stop sharing. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, a lot of new insight and congratulations for the great research that you're doing in Cologne. Thank you very much. Uh, a few questions, uh, Dr. Bitzel. Uh, what is your post-operative protocol when you do this procedure, when you use the tendons? So I have a protection phase of about four to five weeks where I try to keep the patients in an abduction brace. So for me, it's important that they don't uh, work with heavy loads. And I get them with the abduction 30 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees within this five to six weeks. Um, in the beginning, we were restrictive with the external rotation, but now I'm more um, easy with the external rotation. So I let them externally rotate um, from the beginning because I think that works fine with them. Thank you, Dr. Beetzel. And there's a lot of emphasis on the deltotrapezoidal fascia, right? When you do the AC joint surgery. So how do you address the problems of the fascia? Oh yeah, that's right. So there was a paper out there in Germany, um, which said that the surgeons always make a big deal out of it and the anatomists cannot find it. Um, for me, it's when you go in there. So I always open up the AC joint. So I try to really prepare this fascia, the capsule, and like peel off my lateral clavicle. And then when I put in all my sutures and all my reconstructions, I really take the time to double it on top. And what I've learned is that that's a very important step because if you have the sutures in there, they can use, make a seroma and they can do irritation. So I had some failures when I let my residents close it. So now I really put emphasis on closing it by myself really preparing it, perhaps like the trauma surgeons and like you do it with the clavicle fractures, that you really bring it on top and you really close it. I think that's very important. Thank you, Dr. Mitzel. And uh, what, what have been the complications? I mean, it's a great technique. Uh, what have been your initial complications and how did you get over it? For example, there are concerns regarding the slippage of the dog button. Do, uh, do you think that's a problem? Yes, I think... The slack and this like three millimeters getting loose after three months, this is a little bit a common thing. So um, that's why we try to over reduce. And, um, and it's a little bit if the patients are not um, restrictive in the beginning, if they start doing sports directly, they bring in there too much motion. And sometimes the dog bone even presses itself into the cortical bone. And I mean, there's a lot of force on that. So this is, it does not end into a failure, but it gives you a hard time in the first couple of months. Um, and I think they bring in there too much slack then. On the other hand, luckily, and yeah, a solution for that, I think is, with the hybrid system where we have a graft in there as well. So to be honest, right now I have more belief in my combined hybrid systems. And I think the chronics get better than and, and more reproducible better than the acutes without the tendon. So it brings me more and more into this, find out which patient profits and perhaps go conservatively and then later switch to a chronic technique. Fractures with the new techniques, with taking care that you stay proximal in the coracoid, with trying not to do too much drillings um, and take some time for the drilling. Um, that's not so much an issue for us right now. Thank you, Dr. Beat. So just one last question before you wind up the session. 
How do you manage a type 3 injury? Because there's a lot of uh, debate whether it's conservatively managed or a surgically managed. So based on your talk, I would say that I would go for a conservative and in case it produces a chronic problem, then do a tendon-based reconstruction. Exactly. So I, I brought the message. No. Um, so the first thing really is everybody has another idea of a type three. So if we talk about a type three and if we give lectures into a room, like everybody has another idea. So first thing is, is it really a type three or is there some persistent horizontal instability? However, if it's not more than 100% in the CC distance, I start conservatively, which means they get a little bit of support for the first couple of days. Usually after five, six days, they're pretty pain-free. And then we really start training on the scapula. And then I see them after two weeks. So I would be even inside the, the window for acute treatment. And then I see them after four to five weeks. Um, and if they don't manage to get copus after the six weeks, then I can switch to surgical treatment. But basically, type three, a real type three is absolutely nicely conservatively and they will get good. Thank you, Dr. Beetzel. Uh, I think that's all the questions that we have for the session. Thank you for this brilliant presentation and really look forward for one in the future.